Well, we all know St. Louis has some wonderful museum. And as Five on Your Side honors Black History Month, we're getting a tour of an unusual museum decades in the making. Now, this all started with garage sales and flea markets. Art Holiday shows us around. Do you think people know what to expect when they come here? No. They have, uh, I've had people come here and uh, some people told me they thought I had a, one little room. Uh, it blows them away. Long ago known as Millionaire's Row on St. Louis Avenue, this former mansion, funeral home, and church is now home to a remarkable collection. I've uh, been collecting uh, African American artifacts for over 40 years. Calvin Riley is right at home in dusty attics and musty basements. For him, it's a treasure hunt. Vintage toys, photographs and paintings from another era. You have to know what you're looking for because among the trash, there are artifacts. Barbershop history, hospital history, railroad history. And someone said, why don't you open a museum? I never thought about opening a museum. I flew across the country and looked at, looked at other museums to see how they were set up because I have had no museum experience. Now these are Victorian clothing. A lot of people uh, think that all African Americans were slaves and they were, were not. Uh, these uh, clothes come out of homes of African Americans. They were in trunks and, and, uh, and attics and it just shows how uh, they dress. There's World War II memorabilia from black Marines like Godfrey Wilson. This is a Japanese uh, rifle that was brought from Pearl Harbor before they threw the weapons in the ocean. There are also several walls of the unknown. Riley doesn't know who these people are. Maybe you will if you visit. Each piece tells a story. It tells what people were going through, what they had to endure. America's past isn't always pretty or pleasant. St. Louis's Union Station once had waiting rooms designated for colored people. It was a much different time when no Negroes were allowed. There were places you couldn't live and places you couldn't sit when you rode the bus. My goal is to show people uh, that people progress uh, despite uh, being segregated and suppressed in one area. Some of Riley's pieces have national significance, like a sign from the Memphis Hotel where Dr. King was assassinated. And I bought it in the auction. Once a teacher, always a teacher. After more than 30 years as an educator, Calvin Riley is still teaching at the George B. Vachon African American Museum. Yeah, cause people just don't know what, what to keep. They just, it's, uh, it's just stuff to them. Important stuff that can tell us where we've been and how we got here. Now, why is the museum named after George Vachon, the gentleman behind me? George Vachon was an abolitionist who was the first licensed African American lawyer in New York State. Vachon High School is named after him and his son, who was a longtime St. Louis educator. Descendants of Vachon lived in St. Louis, and in the early 2000s, Calvin Riley discovered many family belongings were about to get thrown away. Letters, books, pictures, and diaries that dated back to the 1840s. So Riley saved this historically significant collection and eventually was inspired to start his museum and name it after George Vachon. It's open Wednesday through Saturday. It'd be such a great thing for maybe school groups to go to this too. Is there a fee to get in? Or? There is a nominal fee to get in and it was actually part of the uh, number one in civil rights exhibit last year at the History Museum. They were taking bus tours to this museum. It's a great story. Art, thank you.